You want some orange? Uh, I'm okay. Okay. So Tracy. Yes. Just when you got past one apocalypse, here we are again. That's right. That's oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. How is this one maybe a little bit different than that one? Oh, um, it's quite different. Um, Upton, uh, Upton gets put in quarantine, yes. um, which you guys saw, uh, and she meets um, a young girl that's also in quarantine, and they develop a bond and try to help each other through it. So that's kind of fun. Um, oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> Smells amazing. Yeah. Um, yes, that was all my news. Okay. Yeah. So I will ask the million dollar question. Hey, right. Ever since Upton and Ruzik broke up, all I've been hearing is when are these two guys going to get together? But I also kind of like the friendship and the partnership dynamic that you two have built. So I'm curious, like, what, what's your opinion as actors? Do you want to see Jay and Haley get together? Like, what are you rooting for? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a good. Oh, Either you're way. filming this while I'm munching this orange. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm right on Twitter. Great. <laughs> no. um, I think, um, I don't know, I think if, if that were to happen, Jay would have to get his uh, stuff together. Right? Because he, he's always, you know, they get closer and there's a bond and they trust each other and then Jay goes off the rails and does something crazy and us, yeah. Upton has to like reel him back in. Yeah. So that would have to, that would have to shift in some way. Yeah. Because I'm like, just because they work well together doesn't mean they have to sleep together. Like, they could just work well together. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens. We know nothing. They tell us nothing. Well, it seems like he's trying to kind of step into the role of Woods conscious, kind of like Antonio was. Uh, why do you think he's taking this on? That's a great question. As I finish his orange. Um, I think... Somebody's got to do it. You know, in the first episode, Boyd is up for a murder charge. Yeah. Ruzek doesn't have his badge. And, you know, there's a fine line between uh, right and wrong. And we kind of always walk that line. And sometimes Boyd does some really wrong stuff trying to get the job done, even if it's justified because he's doing something right. And I think Jay, you know, someone has to be the voice of reason and reel him back in and make sure that he doesn't go too far. Because I think Boyd would always go too far if someone wasn't watching his back. That's a great answer. Thanks. <laughs> Good job. I've heard some pieces already that it sounds like there's going to be some Halstead Brothers stuff going on in the crossover and that you're going to get up to a lot of stuff with, uh, with Galvis. Like, what sort of story can you expect there? Um, there isn't a ton of brother stuff. I, I think we're, it starts off that everybody's hanging out, yeah. and so you see uh, the brothers together, and then uh, uh, Nick, Nick's character, Will, he, he ends up almost uh, succumbing to uh, our, our threat. I, I don't know how much I can say, but he, he, Nick gets hurt, and, and Jay arrives... Um, Jay arrives just after that, and uh, after after Will has like kind of gone down. Um, so, but I'm not sure how much I can say. Yeah, I don't I think don't I can. But then, can. then there's also a situation. There's another situation. What's the other situation? And then you're in a situation. And then, and then <laughs> Nick comes to, and then Nick. It's all very cryptic. Nick yeah. comes. I know things happen, and then you're in a situation, and then Nick comes to comes to make sure you're okay. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. come on, man. <laughs> We're already like two episodes past it then now, and I'm like, I don't even remember what happened. So there's uh, that. Yep, yep. That, we told you nothing, really. Yeah, you know, uh, you, and you are we're sorry. dumber now for listening to this. <laughs> we are sorry. You know, and, and Nick mentioned this, though. I mean, Will went through a nightmare last season, including the death of, of your father. Yeah. So how is, is Jay holding up? With that loss and with everything that Jay's been through recently, like mentally, emotionally, how is he right now? Jay's always on the verge of like totally unstable. He's just like holding it together by a thread, yeah. you know, and who knows? He can completely spin off the rails at, at, at any moment, there's, even right now. <laughs> there's going to be an episode of just you sitting in a corner in a chair, just being like, it's just okay. rocking back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> they seem to be kind of setting up uh, Ruth and Paul State as being on opposite sides where it comes to uh, Boyd's methods. Uh, do you think, what are the chances of them kind of butting heads this season? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know that I see it that way. I think each episode kind of stands alone. 
and and every case is unique and there's going to be people that see things this way and want things done a certain way over here and there's going to be people on the other side over here and and it's not always going to be uh, these specific people see it this way and these specific people see it this way. I think you're going to see that interchange get mixed up and everybody's going to have a different opinion and I, I think really uh, I don't know if Ruzek and all said butt episode butt heads in one episode, then they won't in the next. You, you never know. It's it's going to change up every week. You know, they floated the idea in the premiere that Jay has such a promising career. Maybe he needs to distance himself from Voight. Mm. I mean, does that enter into his mind at all, or is he locked up with this unit? He's going to stay with this unit. He's going to stay with Voight. Um, that's a great question. I think. I think Jay uh, loves the unit, and I think that he, like we were talking about before, is, I think his job right now is, is to, to make sure that Voight, I think he loves Voight too, and I, I think he, he doesn't want Voight to go too far, and I think, I think he thinks that Voight's a good cop, but that he needs balance, and I think Jay tries to balance him out. That's what I think. Just in general, how do you feel that the stakes are being raised for each of your characters this season? Um, I don't know, this, I mean, I don't know, the stakes being raised. The stakes are always pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Upton is put in a different situation in, uh, with our new, uh, new character with Rojas. Um, in the coming episode, you see that she, you know, Rojas has joined the team and Voight sends Upton to kind of suss her out and see what she's all about and um, in that process they kind of figure some things out and Upton ends up kind of taking her under her wing kind of big sister um, so that's a fun different side that we don't really get to see um, with Upton very often so that's maybe and I mean that's the interesting thing because that means Upton is now no longer the new girl quote unquote that's true and you know she originally when she was first introduced was kind of in the hostile position of questioning some of Lloyd's moral decisions yeah. and things like that now that she's been here for a while where do you think her, her moral compass lies. Has she kind of gone into the mold of the rest of the team, or is she still going to stand up on occasion and go, I don't think so? Like, yeah, she's pretty, she'll stand, yeah, she's pretty strong, strong uh, minded in her own kind of way. And so if she feels that there's something that she doesn't agree with, she'll pipe up and say it. Um, and that's kind of always been her thing. And she, it's, and even with, you know, with anybody, if there's something that she, she disagrees with, she can't help it. She can't, she's going to get it out. backstory because we've heard so much about her family we've seen a little bit of it there's some, this is so much stuff to mind there have you heard any whispers anything i know nothing i know nothing i know we really don't we know as much as you guys know and sometimes you guys know more yeah. i haven't even seen the trailer for the crossover this morning until just now so hey you guys beat me to beat me to that into that trailer it makes me very worried for <laughs> yeah yeah i'm in a situation yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Tracy, how long did you send the contract for? <laughs> yeah. She's actually off the show now. She flew in from one Chicago. She's been a really good trooper. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. what, what can you say though about Upton and Boyd? Because, like you said, she's still going to stand up if she sees something that she doesn't agree with. But when they first met, they were kind of sussing each other out. So right. So now I have Boyd having her sort of suss somebody else out. I mean, this is a lot about the growth of their relationship. Oh, for sure, yeah. And I think he trusts her, and um, and she trusts him that he'll, you know, tell, open up to her and, and you know, lead her in the right direction. And so, um, there, she does have a bit of a problem initially when when he sends her to Sus Rojas out because she separates the part. He separates the partnership to do so. Um, and you know, having a, a partner, you build that over time. You build that trust, which is something that she she says. And so, um, but she knows that he needs. We need to figure out kind of where who Rojas is, and so, um, so she she trusts that, and trusts him, and, and goes for it. But yeah, their bond has has developed over the last couple of years for sure. So speaking of the partnership, a lot of when you guys were originally introduced was Jay getting over the baggage of I had a long term partner that I allowed myself to trust, and then she dumped me and she went to New York. So where are we at now in that partnership? Is he? I assume he's now over that. Is he able to trust Upton as fully as he would like to, or are there still maybe some things he's he's got to work out? Oh, I definitely think that he he trusts Upton a lot. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think that they're really solid. And that uh, you know Haley's had his back when he's done some really stupid stuff in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, so he definitely trusts her. Yeah, because in certain ways it kind of almost started out like deja vu. It's like, hi, Jay, repeat the same situation to yourself again. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just felt so bad for him. <laughs> so, 
the popularity of these shows just doesn't seem to quit. Why do you think they connect with fans so much? Um, was that like a you answer? Well, because you had a good one earlier. I liked it. Um, <laughs> I, I think that the first of all, we're we're in the fans' homes, you know, once a week, and being that the shows are about first responders, um, we we try to write the shows. I I'm saying we uh, the the producers, the writers, they write the shows very realistically, where we walk this line uh, between right and wrong and being imperfect, and we see the the characters in situations where. Um, they're very human and they're not always heroes and sometimes they really make mistakes big mistakes and so that humanizes them and I think the fans connect with that more and they see the humanity in it and um, and I think we do a good job and, and, and we have realistic storylines. Yeah. Is there anything the two of you would like to explore with your characters that you haven't had a chance to play yet? Um, I want I would love to see Haley kind of um, get a little more emotional and like a little like I think she's very controlled and and, and uh, I would love to see her maybe a little unhinged. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> um, I would love like we were talking about before. I'd love to see Jay and Voight get a little tighter and trust each other more and uh, ease off the tension. And if they could both recognize that they balance each other out, that'd be kind of cool. Jay and Upton sort of feeling with this whole Darius Walker situation that's just unfolded where it seems like there is more of a not altogether clear line between what is good for the people of Chicago and then also the letter of the law. Like where are they standing right now with all of this? We haven't seen too much. Yeah. Um that's a good question. I think at least I know for Jay, he, he's taking things one one step at a time and and I don't we don't know where that's going yet and we don't know you know, we, we don't have him yet. We can't we can't get him really yet. And um, uh, not in the way that we would want to. So is he good for Chicago? I don't know if Jay knows yet. You know? Yeah, I don't really know. Yeah. I'm curious to know what's the atmosphere like on set, because obviously, you know, on TV things are tense and all those things are happening. But what are some like just like fun moments that you guys have filming? Um, even just like from this season or last season. I mean, we literally just laugh all day long. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the polar opposite of what you see on TV. Yeah, We're yeah. all, everybody's just messing around most of the time and then they say action and then put on the serious face. Yeah, especially if we're all in the bullpen. Uh -huh. yeah. Who's like the most surprising <laughs> that like if we were to see them offset or like on set but the Jason, camera stopped Jason's the, the biggest contrast. Like he's he jokes around more than anybody else. Yeah. And he's such a he's so goofy and making fun of everything and making fun of everybody and goofing off and then gets really serious and then you know, it's 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 a huge He can drop he can drop in really yeah. well too. Like he can go from laughing to just dropping in and not break character. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, that's not my strength. So Dick Wolf was telling us a little bit about how brilliant it was shooting the crossover. Can you guys just tell us a little bit about what that process was like, how physically and emotionally taxing that was? It's just a, a pretty, uh, you know, because we're, we were working on our episodes as well, uh, you know, different episodes, so you're hopping around on your days off or on the weekends, and it's just pretty long hours. and, and pretty tiring, uh, yeah. Tiring. Really but, long hours. and. We did a lot of weekends to finish this one, so it's been kind of non-stop for the last month and a half. Yeah. Do you guys find that you're going and catching up with other shows a little bit more around crossover time as viewers? <laughs> around crossover? I mean, yeah. whenever I, I can, I try to try to watch. On what, You know, if we're done in time, then I try to catch all three uh, and try to work in the time. But um, usually we end up working, barely catching um, PD either. So try to try to catch up whenever there's time, for sure. Yeah. So you guys gave me an interesting thought, because there's a lot that even you don't know. Do you guys sit around and theorize about, like, you have maybe your own idea about what Upton's family is like, even though they haven't told you, or maybe like a direction you guys, but how much time do you guys spend going, we don't know the answer, but now I kind of really want to know what it is, and maybe it's this. I, when I started this job, I, I did my own um, kind of backstory imagining of what what she was like and, and kind of work, you know all of that I kind of made it up I don't think that I, I don't do it now as much as I, I had at that time and then now it's just waiting to see what the, what what it all is because I don't know either uh, I don't 
I turn it off. We're at work, we're at work, we're at home, we're at home. I'm not at home with work. As much as I, as little as possible. It's just me, man. Okay, good. Yes, yes.